Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and I am so glad you joined me. Today, I have with me Lola Lovis. She is a parenting and life coach, and she's dedicated to eliminating frustration in the parenting journey by customizing solutions to fit the uniqueness of each child within the family so that a mom can better enjoy the day-to-day of her motherhood. She's the founder of Mothers in Training, based in Montclair, New Jersey, And she also has homeschooled her four children and experienced single parenting, remarriage, home education, mentoring, teacher. Um, You you have a lot of great background, so I think our listeners are going to really enjoy our conversation today. I'm looking forward to it. So today's topic is the changing roles of motherhood. And for those of you who are new moms, you may think, what? I have to change? (laughs) As a mom. And for those of us with older kids or even grown kids, we're like, yeah, you do. But it's not hard, right? Right. So go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, if you when you start your family and you have a long term vision, then it all sort of makes sense. And you understand there's going to be transitions and rhythms and, and, you know, peaks and and valleys and that there's an exit plan at the end of it. And that that reality kind of helps you prepare for the transitions in the motherhood journey. Yeah. And I love that you talk about having an exit strategy um, with your kids because now yours are all grown, right? Am I correct in well, my oldest is 31 and my okay. youngest is 18. So, so yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Almost all grown. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And as my listeners know, um, my four children are between the ages of 10 and 16. Um, but even when they were younger, or maybe especially when they're younger, I kept in mind what I wanted them to be at age 30, what mm. kind of people I wanted them to be. And that helped me as we went through these transitions. So, um, and I love that you mentioned that motherhood changes from one season of parenting to the next, because I often um, love to talk about seasons of parenting. So tell me what to what are to you are some of the seasons of parenting? Yeah. So it's great to be able to segment it. I love the idea when, whenever you have um, organization in your mind, life just gets easier Mm. automatically. So I love the idea in parenting because it's so complex and it's so exhausting and it can get so crazy sometimes to be able to organize the whole journey, starting with the early years, the mommy years, when you are nurturing and you are pouring into the foundation of who your child is, discovering who they are as a person, what their best self might look like and helping them discover it and pursue it. And then uh, moving on into the years of experimenting with how does who I am fit with the rest of the family and then with society and, you know, un- unpacking what that looks like in the, in the middle years. Uh, and then moving on to the high school years where you're, as a as a child, as a more mature child, assessing what do I embrace? What do I let go of? What do I want to carry on with me into the future? And then finally, stepping into full adulthood where you have explored your your foundation, you've embraced the values, hopefully, that you resonate with, that your family gave you, and then having a completely unique relationship as peer to peer with your parents. And so that in a nutshell is is the journey and the seasons that I see. Yeah, and um when you're in when you're in season, you know, when your kids are little, you're in that mommy season, I think you called it. Um we relate to our children in an entirely different way than when we're in the teenage season. Right. For for sure. Absolutely. And it's so important that a mom in particular, but, you know, parents in general, recognize and respect that change because 
you know, as you and I both know, Sarah, if you don't understand the changes in motherhood, you're going to sabotage the season trying to carry into a new season Mm. something that only worked in the last one. Or what I found, too, is that sometimes when your kids hit the teen years, especially the high school teen years, all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, they're going to be leaving. Are they ready for this? And so we start holding on tighter and acting like they're in the toddler stage. <laughs> then, right? I mean, then in the, and that's what causes, I think, a lot of unnecessary friction between, especially moms and kid and their teens. Absolutely. I've often found myself telling, Um, a mom, let your child do, and I'm talking about toddler, let your toddler do as much as they can do. Don't do so much for them. Mm. Because when you do that, when you allow your toddler and the years after that, when you allow your child to do what they can do, you're in a nonverbal way saying, I find you to be competent and capable and a valuable member of our family. That is so empowering and it's a beautiful mindset that really helps a mom transition from one season to the next. Right, and um, but that can also create, and I think this is part of the hesitation, at least in some of the moms I talk to, um, because that can also create it's more time consuming, I should say, and it's, but it's also can create more messes <laughs> in our <laughs> life, right? I mean, so many times when my kids were little, I had to stop myself and say, yeah, my three-year-old can pour her own cereal, right? But she's going to make a little bit more of a mess. And I had to kind of come to terms and be okay with that and be like, this is training her. She's not going to make a mess forever, It's just going to be temporary. And that can go through a whole host of things. Absolutely. I so agree with you. I kind of see it in my mind as uh, train, try, trust, transition. Mm. So that that happens over and over again at every stage. Train, try, trust, transition. And when you kind of have that little sing-song melody in (laughs) in your head, then, you know, when you have to clean up the spill or you have to you know, come back behind your child and redo something maybe later on that they that needs to be redone. Uh, You have a better you have a better vision in your head of what this whole thing looks like. You know, I think if you don't have a a vision in your mind for how this journey goes and how the seasons go and how the days are going to go, you have poor expectations, which lead to frustration. Uh, Yes. And I think that so many times, though, let's just be honest, that we create our own frustration. Oh, goodness. Isn't that the truth? (laughs) As, As always, we are our greatest hindrance to the process. Yeah. And it's and I think that partly it is this. We live in this Instagrammable society, right, where we're always posting these darling pictures of our children, doing these cute matching outfits, and everything is all whitewashed and beautiful. And in reality, life is just messy, and raising kids can be very messy. And um, I think that we really sometimes create frustration for ourselves when we try to take on things that just don't fit for our family, That's right. And you really just tapped into something that I love to hear that you said and that to remind moms, which is there is no comparison. It is so toxic to compare your yourself and your family to your next door neighbor or somebody else, because we are all a hybrid combination. You know, no two people come together with the same history, perspective. Mm. Or, or coping mechanisms for life. So you put those two unique pieces together and then add children to the mix, and it is going to be unique every single time. It's not supposed to be this. It's not supposed to be a cookie cutter uh, household. Right. And I think that one of the ways that we can kind of encourage other moms is you know, to, to be careful about how we either relate to our own, you know, our own kids' stories and also how we react to 
you know, to their kids and what their kids do. Um, one quick example, it's kind of funny, when my oldest daughters were, when my two daughters, who are my oldest children, when they were in, um, I think, first and second grade, um, one of their jobs was to put away their clothes when they were clean and to match their socks. Well, they chose not to match <laughs> match their socks, so they often wore mismatched Colors, not just mismatched colors. One would wear like a knee sock and then an ankle sock. I mean, <laughs> they were really, and I let them pick out their clothes. And as long as they were clean, you know, and hadn't been worn the day before, I was fine with it. But I just remember this other mom at the bus stop. She had two daughters as well, and hers were always impeccably dressed. And she kind of looked at the, and I could tell she was kind of, judging me you know you can tell those looks sure at my can. daughters and but then one of then one of her daughters said to one of mine oh I love your socks <laughs> <laughs> and it just cracked me up because I was starting to feel like should I have matched their socks and I'm like I don't need to take that on that was such a great reminder how kids see the world and how adults see the world and how we need to be more you know, open to just letting our kids be our kids. I mean, it wasn't hurting anyone to have mismatched socks at the bus stop, but sometimes we act like that's like the worst thing that can happen for our kids to leave the house. So I just, sometimes we create, we can create that frustration in ourselves and that comparison, but just the reminder that, you know, I mean, kids really kind of strip it down to the, <laughs> to the reality, don't they? Yeah. And you, you bring up a, another really valuable point, which is you have to consider what is the essential over over what mm. is important. Yes. Right. So, you know, essential, important, meaningful, unimportant. What does your list look like? And you as an individual have to establish what it looks like for yourself and then own it. Mm -hmm. because, because if you don't, you are going to add the additional frustration and rules and constrictions. And, you know, life is just not going to be enjoyable once you start living by everybody else's value system. And it's it's not. And, you know, we should enjoy our kids. Our kids are hilarious. They do funny things. They they have unique outlooks on life. And when we're so focused on, you know, the... Like you said, the the things that don't fit our family, um, it can just up that frustration so much. And isn't it true that kids are just, they're so creative, they're so imaginative, and they're so funny. And honestly, if you can just like go along for the journey and enjoy the ride and let them be who they are, and just like cultivate that and nurture that to bring out their best characteristics like what a privilege as a mother to be able to have that opportunity right and also too i think um what an encouragement we can be to other moms to show that hey you know you know like i told that mom at the bus stop i just kind of smiled and shrugged and just said um you know i have two rules one they has to be clean and two, it, you know, they can only wear it once, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was just kind of, it was just kind of just a reminder that, you know, she wanted her daughters to dress like fine, but it was okay that I didn't. And let's Thanks. just be, let's just have a, you know, and she wasn't really being overly judgmental, but I could tell that it kind of bothered her. And just, and that was a kind of reminder and a check for myself that there are some other things that other moms did that bothered me because I didn't do that and I didn't feel I needed to take that on. And yet sometimes I'm not, we're not comfortable with having that as our boundary. Yeah. And I, I think also to add on to what you just said, if we are going to be judgmental with our children and how we view other children and other families, what is that going to do to our children when they are sitting side by side mm -hmm. with each other in, in class? And aren't we all so vulnerable as children to how our peers talk about us, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, children, children are, can say things without realizing how devastating it is for, to, to, 
for their peer and how it can stay with you for the rest of your life. So we really set the tone as mothers mm-hmm. by being accepting and and respectful no matter what those differences look like in other people because it's going to impact the way our children interact with their peers. Yeah, it's such a great point um, to make because, um, you know, we do need to watch how we talk about other moms and other situations and other families. And we do need to be careful that we're not being judgmental, Um, you know, because we're all in no matter what your family looks like, we're really all in this together. We want to raise our kids the best way we can. Yeah, and it's so important for future generations and for the well-being of, of I mean, if you look at the statistics, things are not looking good. There's mm-hmm. a lot of, there's a lot of uh, addiction and, and opioid use and depression and anxiety. Like we have a response, a, an honor and a responsibility to really be loving and kind and break down some of the barriers that don't need to be there and love up on our kids and help them to enjoy learning. You know, as a homeschooling mom, I'm I'm so passionate about customizing education so that our children mm. continue to love learning throughout the years and not squash that. Right. So we just have so much opportunity. It's such a privilege. It goes by. I know you know this. The seasons go by so yes. quickly. The days are long, but the years are short. Yeah. I know it's one of my favorite quotes, isn't it? This, and it's just so true. You think you bring that little baby home from the hospital and you think, oh, my goodness, the nights are so long. And then you realize, oh, no, they really aren't. Gosh, you know, they say it's like a roll of toilet paper. It gets faster the closer it gets towards yeah. the end. <laughs> I thought that's a good one, too. That's a good one to keep in mind on that. Um, and I think, too, when we when we can just be more relaxed with our own choices, with the own way we're doing that. Like you said, own the way that we're raising our kids. We really give other moms permission to relax as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with you. I I think everybody is looking to the person next to them to say, you know, what are you going to do? And if we can be those trailblazers to, to say, Hey, you know what? No judgment on the on the uh, the habits or the ways of older generations. No judgment there. But let's reassess. Does it still work for us? Let's keep what works. Let's let go of what doesn't. Yeah. And just be willing to be the different parent. Um, We my husband and I realized that we were a little bit different from the other parents. And I think our second daughter's fourth grade class, like the back to school night, or my kids are all in public school. And the teacher was saying, you know, this, she gave this little example. She said, what we do to get to know one another, we go just like me. And she'll say, I'm in fourth grade and everyone stand up and say, just like me. So she did a couple of, you have a child in fourth grade. We all stood up and said, just like me. And then she said, I help my child with my, with their homework every night. And then everyone stood up, but my husband and I, because we're like, um, you know, if they need something, we do. But we don't, as a rule, sit down with them and help them with their homework. And everyone's looking at us. I mean, every single parent stood up, except for us. <laughs> and we're just like, um, okay. You know, but it was, it was just interesting because some of them were laughing because they, you know, realize maybe they shouldn't be standing up and some of them were looking at us like how could you not help your children with their homework and some of them were like really we don't have to help our children with their homework (laughs) it was just it was really interesting to kind of be but to be comfortable with the decisions you make and we were just like okay you know we didn't go home and change it and start helping our kid as a rule with their homework now that's not to say that We didn't answer questions on occasion and that sort of thing. But we made it clear that that was their responsibility. That was something that, um, you know, that their teacher thought they could do it and they needed to try really hard to do it on their own. Um, And it just was interesting, though, that that whole dynamic of, you know, expectations and 
what was expected of us as parents. And it's hard sometimes to do what you really feel is right for your family, even when you're out of step with what it seems like the majority of your of other parents are doing. Yeah. Isn't it crazy that we are still subject to peer pressure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that we would get past this stuff. And it's it's not it's so much more challenging than in concept. It's easy. You know, I've grown up no more peer pressure. But in reality, it's still there tempting and pressing and, you know, trying to have its way. But you said something that uh, I wanted to speak mm-hmm. to as well, which is freedom and responsibility. So you not standing up to say that you help your children with your schoolwork really speaks to the concept of freedom and responsibility uh, that they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So you've raised your child, your children to be responsible. And because they're responsible, responsible, it gives them some freedom to work on their own, to create their own schedule and and accomplish what you what they've you they've earned the right yes. to have more freedom. And I love that because, you know, I think that when we start working with our children when they're early, when they're young and let them discover that they can do things and we do uh, we a- appreciate their capabilities and we rely on them, then they become more responsible. We can back off a little bit more knowing that they're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that that sets the stage for such freedom and flexibility in the in the family dynamic. It it does. And I think that's a great way to end our time together. I think we could keep talking, but we need to wrap this up. So is there any last (laughs) any last words of wisdom or anything you'd like to leave with our listeners? I think I would like to encourage uh, moms to be free. Don't compare yourself. Enjoy the journey. Teach your children and pour into them when they're very young. The, the payoff and the rewards, like the harvest is rich if you really pour into those early years. And eventually, when the time comes that you have to transition away from being mommy and more toward motherhood, just mom, and then eventually peer to peer, you dis- you discover that you have given birth and raised a friend. Mm, I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Well, you've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and today I've been talking with parenting and life coach, Loyla Lovas. She is the founder of Mothers in Training, and you can find a link to her website uh, with this podcast. And we are so glad you joined us in our topic of changing roles in motherhood. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.